Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a video on a condition called spontaneous coronary artery dissection. It's otherwise known as SCAD, S-C-A-D. And this is a very um, uncommon but uh, potentially dangerous cause uh, for heart attacks in young people, mainly in young women and especially in pregnancy. Okay, so this is an interesting and uh, uh, important uh, cause of heart attacks uh, that can affect young women. Um, now, let me try and explain what SCAD is. Okay, most heart attacks occur because the heart arteries that supply the blood uh, to the heart muscle get blocked. Okay, so if you look at a heart artery, it looks like this. Like this is my kind of <laughs> little aid. Okay, so if you look at a heart artery, you have the lumen, you have the bit through which the blood goes, and you have the wall on the outside. Okay, and most heart attacks will occur because you get a buildup of plaque or uh, crud over here, and that buildup gets worse and worse. Eventually, the blood can't get through because there's a blockage. Then, because the blood isn't getting through, that part of the heart muscle get, doesn't get the blood and that part of the heart muscle dies, and that is a heart attack. That is the traditional heart attack that we uh, most commonly see. In SCAD, however, the problem is not within here. The problem is here in the wall. And basically what tends to happen is, for some reason, bleeding starts happening within the wall. Okay, so blood starts accumulating here for some reason. There's bleeding within the wall. And so to accommodate this blood, the wall starts separating like this. Okay, so this is the blood is building and the wall is separating. And what that then does is it starts blocking the hole through which blood gets through to the heart muscle. So it's an unusual cause, but it has the same effect. So in essence, um, uh, the bleeding can go all around. Uh, if there's bleeding, actually what can happen is that the bleeding can come and join here, in which case you get this artificial flap like this. Um, or it can just accumulate all around and cause squeezing of this hole because of this bleeding. Uh, and that is the fundamental basic mechanism by which uh, a spontaneous coronary artery dissection occurs. Uh, the problem with this is that, of course, if uh, this happens, then the blood can't get through to the heart muscle through the normal hole. And uh, because it can't do that, it will lead to a heart attack. If it's a particularly big heart attack, it can be very dangerous, it can lead to heart rhythm disturbances, and it can even, in its severest form, lead to sudden death. Um, so that's, what, that's, why, that's how it occurs. Who gets it? Um, typically, it affects women below the age of 50. Uh, women outnumber men at a ratio of 9 to 1. Uh, SCAD is considered a rare cause of heart attacks. In the general population, if you look, probably about 4% of all heart attacks occur because of SCAD. Uh, it may be even less than that. In women aged 50 or less, it probably accounts for uh, 25 to 35% of all heart attacks. And in pregnant women, the proportion is even higher. So it's one of the most important causes of heart attacks in pregnant women. Why does it happen? Uh, the truth is we don't know for sure, but it is believed that uh, during pregnancy there are hormonal changes, particularly in the third trimester and during childbirth, and even in the immediate period after delivery. And this can make the arterial walls vulnerable and weak. And what we don't know is whether it's just the pregnancy that's doing it or whether these people have an underlying propensity to start off with. What we do know is that those people who have very tortuous bendy arteries tend to be more prone to this more bendy arteries therefore more shearing force of the blood going through that could be a contributor uh, now of course if you have a you know there are several conditions which can uh, contribute to having a propensity to a weaker artery weaker coronary arteries these include a condition called fibromuscular dysplasia in which there's abnormality of this area and this, you know, so 60 to 70% of SCAD patients are found to have fibromuscular dysplasia in other vessels, not in the coronary vessels, but elsewhere. Um, connective tissue diseases, in particular things like Ehlers-Danlos type 4 syndrome, Marfan syndrome. Uh, people who've had recurrent previous pregnancies may have more vulnerable coronary arteries. Hormonal therapy is supposedly uh, a cause for weaker uh, coronary arteries. And systemic inflammatory diseases. Once you have that propensity to a weaker coronary artery, 
a variety of different stressors can then uh, be the be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, these stresses include emotional stress, uh, extreme physical stress such as exercise, labor, delivery, uh, the Valsalva maneuver which is excessive straining and drug abuse as well. And these are all things that can actually stress the coronary arteries and if the coronary artery is already weak then you can develop SCAD. Okay. How does it present? And presentation can be variable. You know, some people may be completely asymptomatic. They may, if they have had a minor amount of uh, this dissection, they may be asymptomatic. Um, and in the most extreme cases, it can just lead to sudden death. It's very variable, very dependent on the degree of flow limitation and how much of this uh, coronary artery is affected. How far does this uh, dissection progress? You know, how far does it go down? Um, but most patients will tend to present with severe crushing discomfort, like an elephant sitting on their chest. Um, often patients will be nauseous, clammy, uh, they may get breathless, they may feel dizzy, but chest discomfort is by far the commonest uh, symptom. Um, what investigations are needed to confirm the diagnosis? Well, the ECG, the 12 lead ECG, may show signs of heart muscle damage or signs of a heart attack. The blood test may be raised in keeping with a heart attack, but these tests only tell you that you're having a heart attack. They don't tell you that your heart attack is because of this process called SCAD. And the definitive test to try and work out whether uh, it's a problem within the blood vessel or on the outside of the blood vessel is to do a coronary angiogram where you um, cannulate the heart arteries and inject some dye. And uh, when you look at the angiogram, you'll see um, three different patterns depending on the nature of the spontaneous coronary artery dissection. So in fact, if, for example, you get this kind of problem, then when you inject dye, you will see some dye go in there and then dye go in there. And that's very typical. And that will uh, be very obvious on the angiogram because you'll see this artificial lumen being lit up by the dye. And that occurs in about 25% of patients with SCAD. Uh, more often, however, the SCAD doesn't go like this. You just get... Um, you just get the blood around this and you get this very uh, um, long, um, smooth, diffuse narrowing of the artery. Remember, if you have plaque over here, which is the traditional way of a heart attack, you'll get an irregular jagged edge. You won't get that very smooth uh, appearance. And then there's a third, and that occurs in the majority of cases, 70%. There's a third um, uh, type where you do get a much more focal narrowing. This is quite difficult and can be very difficult to distinguish from um, the normal kind of heart attacks on angiography. What is the treatment for SCAD? Uh, the treatment is generally conservative, okay? Closed monitoring, so these patients should be in a hospital, they should be on coronary care. Uh, they generally don't recommend putting a stent in when you see a narrowing like that, yeah, unless uh, the patient is really unstable or a large part of the heart is being threatened because of this. And the reason they don't like it is because actually if you have this thing and you're trying to put a wire in to put a stent, the wire could actually go down here, it could make things worse, um, you could cause more trauma to the area and that could be harmful. So generally people like to leave it to settle by itself rather than uh, trying to put stents in. All right. Uh, what other tests should be done for this condition? Well, if you're diagnosed with SCAD, I think everyone should have screening of their other blood vessels, including their kidney blood vessels, their uh, brain blood vessels, because of this condition called fibromuscular dysplasia, which is seen in about 60% of patients with SCAD. And this, you can look for this condition uh, by doing something called CT angiography or uh, MRI angiography. Uh, what treatment should be given? Well, generally, most people would recommend giving you uh, blood thinning medication, so aspirin uh, for long for life, uh, clopidogrel, which is another blood thinning medication for a year. Uh, if you have plaque over here, if you've got very high cholesterol, or if you've already got some plaque or over here as well, then statins. And then, if depending on how much heart muscle was damaged. They may give you ACE inhibitors, which are like ramipril, lisinopril, perindopril, or beta and beta blockers, um, like bisoprolol. Um, and these have been shown to stop the heart from getting weaker over a period of time and may also help strengthen the heart up again. What is the prognosis of SCAD? 
uh, in studies in patients who've had SCAD, um, the lesions tend to, uh, in those people who've had SCAD and then have had another angiogram, we see that the lesions, the, the area which is injured, has healed up in about 70 to 97 percent of patients, okay? Uh, in patients with SCAD, 4.5% um, will suffer a proper heart attack whilst in hospital. 17% of patients will suffer a major cardiac event in the next two years after diagnosis of SCAD. And 13% of patients will probably have a recurrence of SCAD uh, later on in life. One of the big concerns a lot of people have because SCAD can occur in pregnancy is, can I get pregnant? You know, can I get pregnant? And that's a huge, uh, you know, very important decision. Uh, and given the concerns for possible recurrent SCAD on re-exposure to the stresses of pregnancy, many clinicians would say it's not a good idea to get pregnant again. However, this potentially life-changing advice is not based on a robust evidence base. There's no real good evidence to support that advice, the only study was uh, involved about eight patients, eight SCAD survivors, who then went on and became pregnant again. And um, in this group, one patient had another episode of SCAD, okay, on the, sub on the second pregnancy. Patients who do want to get pregnant uh, need to be managed in a tertiary center, ideally before they get pregnant, but during the pregnancy for sure. They should be managed by a multidisciplinary team, a team that involves a cardiologist who has an interest in SCAD, uh, obstetricians, obstetric anesthetists, and a maternal fetal medicine specialist and neonatologist. Uh, the things that they need to pay really close attention to during the pregnancy and in particular in the de delivery is really good pain control to minimize stress, uh, early epidural placement, again, to minimize stress, etc. Delivering in the left lateral position, uh, treating high blood pressure aggressively, and minimizing maternal effort during um, delivery. Wherever possible, it is still preferred that the delivery is as natural as possible. Uh, but if, the, if there is concern, then uh, they may plan for a cesarean section. Another question that a lot of people have after SCAD is, can I exercise after SCAD? And um, patients should be encouraged to exercise, and ideally through a formal rehabilitation program. In one such program, patients were encouraged to um, keep their heart rate no higher than 50 to 70% of their maximum predicted heart rate, and to keep their systolic blood pressure no higher than 130 millimeters of mercury. And women were encouraged not to lift any more than 20 to 30 pounds, and men no more than 50 pounds. And uh, such a program was uh, found to be both safe and beneficial uh, for patients who had suffered from SCAD. So this is a quick overview of SCAD. Uh, I will have a transcript of everything I've said on my website, which is drsenjayguptacardiologist.com. I've got a ton of other um, articles, etc., that I've put on there, I've written on there. So if you get a chance, do visit it. It will mean a lot to me. Um, do leave a comment. I, I, would love, I would love to hear from you. Uh, additionally, if you've had SCAD, I would love to hear from you if you'd like me to publish your story in an anonymized way on my website, then I would love to do that because I think we need to raise awareness of this condition. Um, what else? Um, you, can, um, you can converse with me through my Facebook page, which is at, at your cardiologist. Uh, and um, you can talk to me if you wanted to uh, via www.yourcardiology.co.uk where you can actually book an appointment to speak with me over Skype if you wanted to. Uh, other than that, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for all the kindness uh, and the great uh, encouragement you give me. It means a ton. And uh, it, this whole thing has given me a new lease of life. So thank you so much. Uh, all the best and uh, have a lovely weekend. Take care.